Now we're no strangers to failures in the garden and we always constantly trying to improve our soil quality and we want to do what we did in a previous homestead where we added some in-ground worm bins. So in this video, we're gonna do an easy DIY worm bin for our garden. So there was a lot of questions that was asked on the previous video when we first did this and we want to address those right now. And one of the first question was, can you freeze the food prior to putting them into the worm bin? And the answer to that is yes. We actually recommend that just in case that everything that's inside of your bin is dry. Once that food defrosts, it's going to rehydrate everything in there to allow the worms to breathe. One viewer asked, can you add worms into your worm bin? I do not suggest doing this because you will throw off your ecosystem by adding some uh, worms that's not used to your environment. You could either kill it off or even harm your ecosystem. So you don't want to do that. We had a viewer out in the hot, humid area ask, will worms survive in their hot, humid climate? Uh, just like in the northern climate, if you get around the cold area, cold temperatures, uh, if you have natural worms that were used into your environment, the worms will survive. Now they will barrel either deeper or stay around to the surface depending on how the temperature is to help regulate their body temperature. Now after seeing us drill holes into our buckets, another viewer asked, can you drill holes at the top of your lids? And we don't recommend this. I mean, you can if you want to, but... <laughs> but you will be introducing other insects that you probably don't want. There are some good beneficial insects that's gonna be like your earwigs, your roly polies, and you might even get some black soldier flies. So if you're okay with those being in your worm compost bin, go ahead and do that. But for us, we're keeping our lid secure. I'm gonna go feed this cow, our neighbor's cow that lives across the street. But while I do that, I'll answer another question that was on the video. And they was asking, how long can the worms live? And most worms, if you keep them in a good environment, can live anywhere from three to four years. And they will repopulate depending on their environment every 90 days. So keep them nice and fed and keep them interested and they'll stay around and live. Get the baby. You want some, you want some alfalfa thing? Hold on. Let's see what we got. Good. Not that. You're supposed to get the food. There you go. You, you smell it. You smell it. Get it. Let me see. Oh. You want some of that? Don't bite my hand. Oh, you're nasty. Look at that nastiness. Yucka, yucka, yucka. Can you see it? You smell it? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see if we can answer this last question without getting interrupted from our friend here. And the question was, will the worms eat the plants? And the worms eat mostly organic matter, sometimes microorganisms like the good fungus, bad fungus, uh, bacteria, and things that are decaying of your food waste. And we'll talk a little bit more about what to feed your, your worms. He's like, uh, I need some more of that. Now, there's some benefits to adding worms to your garden. <laughs> One of the benefits is definitely not a cow. One of the benefits is it's going to improve your soil quality uh, because it's going to allow a lot of nutrients that's going to be a readily available to your plants. And it's also going to allow some type of aeration because your roots, as they're burrowing and going in and out of the uh, worm bins or throughout your garden, they're going to be aerating and allow the roots to spread out easy and also allow the moisture when you water your plants to penetrate deeper into the soil. Look at Mrs. Naked Gardener over there tending to the, uh, the cow. 
How we start off our worm bins is we start off with a brown layer. With the brown layers, we do shredded paper, shredded leaves, shredded cardboards. Uh, you could do compost, peat moss, or cocoa core. Since we have a lot of cocoa core left, we're going to do about two to three inches in here. And then we're gonna add our food waste, which is our greens. And with those is basically any of the food scraps or food waste that you have in your kitchen, you can add it in here. Now be mindful, the things that we normally add is gonna be like the leafy greens. Now, most worms love like squashes, melons, pumpkins, things of that nature, also apples, bananas. Now you don't want to add things like meat, dairy products, greasy and oily types of food. So be mindful of that. If anything of that nature, add it to your compost, let the black soldier flies take care of that. Now, after you add your food waste or your green material, you wanna add some type of grit because worms don't have any stomach. They use your gizzards. And what the grit does is allow them to break down the food a lot better. So with grit, we're gonna use, you could use a pulverized eggshell, use coffee grounds, or you could use even dimaceous earth or what we call DE, or you can even add azomite, which is gonna add trace minerals back into your soil. Now, if you don't have any of those things, you can also use a very fine sand, or you can even use topsoil since most topsoil has sand. Now, how often do people need to add these extra materials? Now, worms can eat their body weight in a day. So you have to kind of check it every, every now and then. How often do you check yours? I would suggest checking it at least daily. So that way you can see how much you need to add uh, more food in there. For me, I like to check mine daily. And that way you can see if, you're, if everything is, is too dry, too wet, if it has an anaerobic smell where basically no oxygen is getting inside it, it has like a funky, nasty smell, that means you need to add some more brown materials and mix it up. Uh, if it's too dry, either add some more green or some more water in there. Uh, so that way it can, the worm, when the worms go through in and out, it helps them to breathe and move through the whole medium right there. Now let's be honest, you don't have that kind of time and you honestly, I know, don't check it that often. Mm -hmm. For people that have busy lives like you and busy schedules, what is the minimum they should be checking it? At a least, week. At least once a week. Now, if you're interested, we did a more in-depth video about this. We'll put that video off to the side. 